Yeah, well, uh, those players that you mentioned that we had with Green Bay, uh, it wasn't me. It was a collaborative effort, um, and we were we were really excited to get those guys. And they've obviously, you know, Greg was a great player, and Devonte continues to, you know, break records, and and eventually he'll be getting the gold jacket. Um, uh, thanks for the question about Marvin. Like he's a good player. Um, obviously, there's a lot of strengths to his game, and um, he can translate into any offense in the NFL. Yeah, uh, Brandon Bean's done a great job with those guys. Um, you know, they obviously have Josh Allen. They have tremendous weapons on offense. They have a, a really good defensive scheme. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to compete with them as we move forward here. Um, you know, the, they've done a great job drafting, and that's something that, that we're going to continue to try to do. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say there's a lot of options on the table. Um, uh, I'm glad you asked about Mac and Bailey. Um, we're not, we're not going to be a program that's talking about these guys in terms of, uh, you know, through the media. We're gonna, we're gonna do what's best for the team behind the scenes, and, and uh, the strategy of that is gonna be uh, myself, Gerard Mayo, Macro, and we're gonna try to, uh, try to do the right thing for, for the team. Uh, it, it doesn't impact us. Mike's a core player for us. That that you know, it's no secret we want to try to keep Mike, um, and it'll just be a little bit of a wrinkle dealing with him. Uh, Mike's really smart, and he's introspective, and he's thoughtful, and he understands. You know, he knows what he wants, which is always good when you're dealing with a player, um, and and he's certainly someone that you know we, we view as a cornerstone for us. I think it's a really good year for quarterbacks. Um, it's a really good year at a lot of positions. Uh, like any position, we're gonna we're gonna evaluate their strengths and weaknesses, determine who fits for us. We're pretty early in the process here. Like I haven't met any of these guys. Gerard hasn't met any of these guys. So, you know, as we continue through the process here, we'll we'll determine um, what's best for the team. And you know, one thing uh, about the quarterbacks in this draft specifically that that I'm excited about is they they all look like they're really tough guys, which you know is obviously great at any position, but the quarterback position especially. Um, I don't know how important this week is for that specifically, but I think it's about talking to the right people and asking the right questions. And when we meet with them, asking the right questions. And that may be here in a formal interview, that may be you know, at a later date at the pro day or, or wherever that may be. But we, we have to determine you know, who, who can handle being the quarterback of the New England Patriots. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think I think the key is just having open and honest meetings and dialogue. Um, we had a, a series of meetings last week that were tremendous for us as we all got on the same page in terms of, you know, what our team needs are. And I was actually really encouraged by everybody willing to just say their opinion, even if it was different from the previous person. So, you know, having those open, honest meetings and, and working together to determine the best outcome is is definitely what's important. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I, th I think part of being in a leadership position is understanding the strengths and weaknesses of everybody in the building, and, and that includes myself. Like, I have strengths, I have weaknesses, and it's important to be able to supplement, you know, your team with, with people who can, you know, feed off of each other. Uh, good question. Um, you know, first of all, being, a, being someone that can elevate his teammates, someone that your teammates want to play for, I think that's an extremely underrated thing that people don't really talk about that much. Um, leadership's important, and obviously, you know, physical talent. We wouldn't be talking about these guys if they weren't physically talented. Uh, body language on the field is very important at that position. You know, you don't want a guy that's throwing his hands up after a bad play, or you can you can see him physically, you know, pointing at somebody, or you know, body language is important. Everybody's looking to the quarterback. Um, and as far as outside agencies, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a lot of tests that we use and resources like that. Um, I don't know if there's one specific to body language that we utilize.
Uh, I would say that all the, all the options are on the table. Um, we definitely want to keep Mike and Kyle, and you know we're hopeful to continue to work with with Kyle's agent and Mike to uh, to make that happen. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Yeah, I think there's, there's going to be a little bit more reliance on playing young players. I think it's really important in today's football to be able to play young players and develop from within. Yeah, I would say all, all options are on the table, and we haven't heard anything specifically. Uh, it's going to be a collaborative effort. Coach Mayo, myself, Macro, the whole staff. Um, at the end of the day, somebody has to has to make that pick, and, and that'll be myself. Yeah, I think uh, when you look throughout the league, that's a good question. I think when you look throughout the league, most of the quarterbacks are first rounders. Um, I think there's exceptions to be had like you know Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy and Tom Brady. Um, but I think just the the league-wide understanding of how important that position is and how important it is to have somebody there that can help you you know win games and get over the hump has, has changed league-wide. Why do I think the Packers keeping the quarterback right? Luck. No I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I, I think uh, I think the scouting process that you know that I grew up with that Brian Gutekunst continues to to em employ is has been really good, and you know they've been able, fortunate enough to to you know sit sit Rogers and sit Love for a year that and that that's been able to help them. I wouldn't say that that applies to every quarterback, but it certainly helps them. Yeah, I think uh, in terms of scouting itself, it's just kind of trust what you see and believe in it. Um, but also, also really lessons about people. Um, I still believe, and, and this is great to, to be able to work with Gerard, who also believes this. This is a people business, and it's about developing people. And the culture is created from the people in your building, whether that's scouts, coaches, players, support staff. And I think that's tremendously important uh, as, as you try to build a culture that you want. Uh, we're going to aggressively try to help the team uh, take that however you want it, but we will we will try to do what's right, whether that means spending or saving. We'll uh, TBD. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So my first trip to the combine was uh, 1993. I was 10 years old. This is my 30th combine. Um, I've been every year except for the 2021 when they didn't have it. Um, the combine now is so much more organized than it used to be. I mean, the workout was supposed to start at, at 10 uh, back in the 90s, and maybe it would start at 1, and everyone would be sitting in the dome the whole time. It was, it was crazy. The, there were no formal interview times. It was like a big scrum of people grabbing guys. There were scouts and coaches fighting each other because they wanted to interview somebody next. Like It was, it was kind of wild. Um, but it's uh, a credit to Jeff Foster and, and the league and, and uh, NFS to, to putting this thing together. What was 10-year-old you doing here? I was, uh, I was really just kind of dipping my toes into scouting and, and watching the workouts and evaluating. Um, my dad used to sit down at the start of the 40s, and it was, it was him, Bill Parcells, and Al Davis, and I was just sitting there, like, soaking it all up. Like, it was, it was just tremendously rewarding, and, a, and a, you know, kind of as I look back on it, it was, you know, definitely a special time. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, I think the main thing is just uh, getting players that fit our culture, um, getting players that want to do right, want to do the extra. But in terms of just physical physical skills, uh, we need to weaponize the offense. We need to be faster and more explosive on defense. And you know, height, weight, speed, um, playmaking ability. There'll be definitely an emphasis on those things. Pitch to free agents. Yeah, I would say our pitch to free agents is, you know, this is a new program and we're, we're heading in the right direction. 
it's a new era. We have leadership with Gerard Mayo that is going to be tremendous. Like he's he's just an unbelievable leader and developer of people. And I think that you know as we move forward with the new offense and defense, like it's going to be it's going to be pretty special and exciting here. Yeah, Robin's been a good resource for everyone. Um, she continues in her role as, uh, as chief legal counsel, and uh, she's been helpful uh, with some of the day-to-day, behind-the-scenes things that need to get taken care of. Yeah, in some ways, but I think that's kind of free agency as a whole. Like, you know... You can teams can put their best recruiting pitch on, and you know at the end of the day, like a lot of times they'll go to whoever's offering them the most money. So, uh, well, that's a good question too. Like the the amount of information that we get here is just so tremendous. Not only the timing and testing, you know, the measurements, the body types, the the jumps, and all those things, but we get all the medical information. We get to meet with 45 guys formally and uh, countless others informally, um, talking to agents, getting information, talking to players to to front office people and other teams and scouts and just the amount of information that we can accumulate in a week is awesome and and it's really a credit to the city of Indianapolis the way this thing's set up too because everything is like right here and so you know it was 70 degrees out yesterday but there's no need to go outside here because everything is just kind of connected but no it's 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 a it's still a, a really great resource for us. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they prefer to stay out of football, but um, they're, they've they been very supportive of Gerard and, and myself and, and Matt. And, you know, it, it, anything we need, we've got in, in a lot of ways. So um, I think they have opinions, which they'll share, but ultimately it's it's down to Gerard and I. Yeah, so uh, we changed the grading system. It's a little bit uh, more similar to what we did in Green Bay. Um, the, the previous Patriot system was more, this is what the role is, and this is more kind of value-based. So I think it, it makes it a lot easier for scouts to rate guys and, and put them in a stack of, like, this guy's the best, this guy's the worst, and, and everything in between falls into place rather than sort of more nuanced approaches. I, I just think it makes it, it, it accounts value better, and it also makes it easier for the scouts in the fall as well as in the spring to determine where guys will get drafted. Uh, senior personnel executive. Yeah, in, in a sense, I mean, we'll still have slot receivers and perimeter receivers, things like that. It's, to me, it's a little bit less about the grading scale and more about the process that, we're gonna, that we've put in place. Um, this process is, is, is a lot more collaborative. We hear from the scouts more. We're going to be able to uh, determine, you know, together, like, what's the best thing for the team at the, at the end of the day. Uh, you know, it, it's actually been really encouraging. The scouts have been really open to it, and they're trying. And, you know, some guys have been here for 20 years with the old system. So, again, I, I think it's, again, le- it's, it's to, for me, it's a lot less about the grading skill and more about the process of, of determining you know, who the best player for the Patriots is. Yeah, the front office I worked with in Green Bay was phenomenal. I mean, just when I look back at those times, like the amount of guys that have gone on to great success in this league, and Ted was the forefront of that. Ted was so humble and and so introspective, and just taking a lot of, a lot of things from him uh, will help me as I move forward in my career. I'm sorry. How would you define the Packer way? We heard about the sports last Yeah, the Packer way um, to me is just sort of a draft and develop, um, extend your core performers from within, um, and and again, it's about it's about honesty, respect, and treating people the right way. In terms of quarterback specifically, um, I don't know that I would say it's a benefit or a hindrance. Like I think every every person, every situation is different. Um, I think there's something to be said for somebody that's 
grown and developed in the same scheme for four years or five years. And I also think you know there's something to be said for someone who has had those different exposures and has had to deal with that adversity of changing schemes and changing staff. So I think I think it's an individual based answer. Thank you, Elliot.